and that you can have a um, camera and you can see that whether it will be the inside condition, whether the protective layer will be damaged or not, or something like that. That you can do in your own boiler. Okay? But here, some non destructive testing, and in case of uh, that um, well joint, you can suspect some defects. Sometimes radiography can do, industrial radiography, that some uh, lack of fuse or blow holes or porosities. So, that way, not in case to case basis. Non destructive testing is to be done. As per you can see the visual inspection report, you have to done. Then, macroscopic examination. Macroscopic examination, this can be done either in naked eye or in a portable microscope or some uh, in optical microscope at lower magnification. What is in case of macroscopic? Suppose there is a creep. So, there is you see that there is some creep, there is an adherent oxide layer and there is some scale cracking of this, longitudinal scale cracking of this, that you can series of cracks inside the failure zone. That you have to done by the macroscopic examinations. Even fracture surface, I will show in detail, fracture surface uh, that uh, in case of fatigue failure, you can see there is some series of concentrating circles that is called beach mark or situation marks. That can be, can, you can be seen by macroscopic examination. Selections and preparation of metallographic specimens. This is very important. When to select the uh, uh, specimen? So you see that uh, if there is a failed tube, whatever mostly, you see there are three ways. There is a failure zone. Suppose this is a failure zone. So what do we do? We take the sample from attractive failure tube. So this way, we take one sample, okay, from this way, from this way, this way, we take one sample. And this is the sample from the fracture tube. And for comparison, we can take one sample, we can take one sample from one service exposed tube. We want one service exposed tube nearby that failure tube. Suppose this is a service exposed to you nearby the failure zone. So this is the failed part. So we have mounted, there is one sample from this, there is one sample from this. And we can take one, one another specimen. So where we have taken the sample from service exposed to you nearby, where there, and we see that there is a sample from this tube. So we can see the microstructure of this sample and we can also see the microstructure of this sample. Then what will be the difference? If it is from the fracture team, there is hardness exposed to If you can see that there is a creep damage, only this portion, microstructure is damaged due to creep and this here there is nothing. So this fracture is concentrated on this localized zone only. But if you can see that there is a damage over here also, so the series of tubes, so it has been affected by overheating. So we can give recommendation that you have to take care of this, uh, that whole portion of the tubes, uh, so that overheating can be avoided. So this, uh, you can see that there is a localized overheating, whether there is a chokage or that some erection, that uh, bar to welded joints or debris are there. So this will hinder the flow. That's why localized overheating is there. So that will create this failure. But nearby to you, if the failure that the microstructure is okay, so you see that this is concentrated on this one. So this way we have to attack the selection of the sample. In case of caustic gouging, you see in case of caustic gouging, so caustic gouging starts from inner surface. So whatever you do, so you have to cut the sample into two pieces, okay? So this is a ring. So you have to cut the sample, cut the sample, and cut the sample, you can see the inner surfaces. Inner surfaces, you see this is the gouging portion. This is the gouging portion. So nearby this gouging portion, you have to take the sample. Okay. Otherwise, you can get the proper uh, fracture, uh, proper uh, microstructure in that portion. So gouging portion, adjacent to gouging portion, so you have to take the sample. So this way, the sample selection is very important in case of failure analysis. You have to know that where to take the sample. 
In case of erosive, you see that. In case of erosive, there is no change, uh, no change in microstructure. So how can you uh, that assess that what is the erosive? You have to take the cross sectional of that portion. Suppose this is a failure zone. So failure zone. This is failure zone. So you can take a circular cross section of that thing. You see that the erosion portion, erosion portion, that thickness will be very low. Okay. In case of gouging also, you can say that cross section of this sample and gouge portion will be, you see that there is a gouge portion. So that way the selection of the sample is very important. Another is that uh, examination and analysis of metallographic sections. Sometimes in case of uh, overheating, some quick damage has happened. So you have to show that uh, quick damage. So you have to go for uh, very high magnification, whether quick cavitation is there, whether the cavitation has been joined up, linked up, whether the micro crack will form. So, you have to go for 400 or 500. Sometimes you have to go in scanning electron microscope because uh, that will beautifully depict what will be the carbides and what will be the cavitation. So, you have to go for very high magnification. Then, factographic analysis and mechanical testing. Factographic analysis this is important. What is the mode of fracture, whether it is a brittle fracture or ductile fracture, whether it is a fatigue fracture, that can fracture surface can depict. So, fracture surface. In optical microscope, it is not possible because the depth of focus is not uh, high. So we can do this fracture surfaces. We will show in the practical training. So it is in scanning electron microscope. There we are using electron. So fracture surfaces can be beautifully seen, and you can see that what will be the crack initiation joint, you know, the crack propagation and fast fraction. Then sometimes mechanical testing because in case of uh, uh, you are, people are designing the material, so they are looking after that what will be the, because there is a load bearing member, so what will be the specified UTS, what is YS, yield stress, or uh, ultimate tensile strength or elongation. That you have to add here. But in case of sometimes, in case of graphitization or grip or something like the mechanical, uh, that this parameter will be hampered. So you have a, if you can do the mechanical testing, we have an idea that uh, whether it will be, um, uh, whether it is a mechanical, that UTS, that uh, testing parameter uh, will be correct or not. Then hardness. Hardness is very important. Hardness, you see, we have to take in the hardness in microstructure because in case of microstructure, the hardness will be, hardness also changes. If sometimes that you deep damage specimen, deep damage is associated with thermal softening. So there is a decrease of hardness. What will be the original hardness and what will be the major hardness? If there is a decrease in hardness, if there is a severe uh, mechanic, uh, that hip, hip damage, in case of carbon steel, the hardness will be 124, 125, within 120. So we can, uh, that time we can say that the hardness will be very poor due to thermal softening, due to thick. And in case of gravitation, there is a embrittlement, in case of hydrogen damage, there is an embrittlement. There is a embrittlement means hardness will be increased. So there is a brittle, brittleness of the material. So hardness will so hardness can depict uh, uh, indirectly it will depict the mechanical properties as well also it can be co collaborate with your uh, the, the microstructure. Then based on all the test reports, we can have the uh, failure mechanism. Uh, and this failure mechanism based on the logical conclusion, recommendation and suggestion to prevent similar kind of failure. So collection of background data, just I have given one example. Suppose, what will be the collection of prior manufacturing history, whether the tube is normalized or tempered or annealed, what will be the tempering annealing, that you have to, to give. Operational history, that is temperature, pressure and fluctuation of load. Then bulging swelling. Suppose in, in this case, whatever you can de de depict, that is, you can depict that there is a bulging this portion. Okay. Then there is you can see that there is a cracking, longitudinal scale cracking, this portion around the failure zone. And failure is not a large one, it is a small blister type of failure zone. And if you can have a cross-sectional view, you see there is a inside side ID side scale. This is very important because as the thickness of the ID side scale is increasing, 
so the heat transfer will be hampered. So there is a average increase in the tube metal temperature. So the localized metal temperature will be high and it can cause the that bulging and subsequent failure. So this failure bulging, this is if you say that bulging swelling, there is no erosion and corrosion around failure to that you look after in any failure. What will be the material specification? What will be the running hours and proper field quality assurance adopted or not? That is important because uh, uh, when you are given whether in the particular suppose in case of final supervisor whether you have given proper material or not higher grade of steel if, if you can give in a higher a lower grade of steel instead of higher grade of steel so this is a chances of over it so this collection of background data is very important here is the visual inspection of different area you see that so you see this this tube what happens this tube there is a wide open fracture and when the steam is coming out so it has been deformed like this it will deform the specimen so there is a bending deforming so it can you see that that time the temperature dispersion is very high and material is has been deformed so that and steam is coming out so when steam is coming out you can see i can show that there is there is steam wheel that points this you is sometimes in hot and wet you see that there is a different type of structure because this is the quenching quenching effect of this you see whatever i just tell when there is a tube failure this steam will come out and it will that impinge on the other tube so sometimes uh, when we receive four five tubes you have to predict what will be the primary cause of failure primary tube failure failure job because this tube this to steam as soon as the tube failure has happened you have to stop the boiler but in case of night time it is very difficult <coughs> if you cannot do the uh, stop the boiler as quick as possible so there is a impingement of the steam uh, from this and and also there is a loss of water circulation this will make also overheating to the other side so this is one of the typical failure zone this is wide open burst you see that this type of you you see that wide open burst is also there this is inside the portion you have to make the tube half so this is a caustic gouging mark you see that caustic gouging mark this is important and this caustic gouging mark due to the poor water chemistry and also this is build up of any waste or this is also a failure uh, region wide open burst but this is due to that atsh uh, due to graphitis you see there is a why that bulging of the tube bulging of the tube and uh, finally there is a small blister type opening there is a longitudinal scale cracking hard uh, scale outside the surface and this is the failure that uh, this failure will uh, have some inner deposits inner deposits as well as outer deposits so based on this uh, failure you have to be uh, have a conclusion of visual inspection whether the failure type is wide open burst this no structure this is a common term used in boiler uh, tube failure analogy whether thin leaf or thin leaf you see that this is a thin leaf failure because uh, it is very thin it is it is also but this is uh, this is uh, sometimes this is some if you can cut this is a thin leaf failure because this is small blister type opening and based on this uh, uh, that uh, visual inspection and also your um, uh, wall thickness you have to use a little thickly cut thin what is the bulging and swelling these are all that is a bulge these are all bulge these are all bulge at an outside scale of scale cracking detachment of protective oxide scale and internal deposits this is the uh, sometimes there is a protective layer will be damaged and this is this, this portion protective level will be damaged and there is a gouging or caustic gouging so uh, this is uh, sometime failure to see that uh, fracture surface how clean is the fracture surface you see that some portion has failed so as soon as you can see the failure so you have to put oil or grease otherwise this clean fracture surface will not be possible so this fracture surface this fracture surface we have to be cut from this fracture area and clean it properly and then put in that what type of fracture will be there this is a Uh, uh, fatigue failure uh, fracture. Uh, you see that 
there is a concentration of uh, circles which will form that beach mark or stellation marks and this you can you can uh, naked eye you can see these marks and this is the crack initiation zone crack initiation zone then it will propagate and finally first structure brittle fracture zone is there so this is the, that uh, inside of the tube or header so by video probe inspection that that is that uh, your uh, tube is damaged uh, internal deposits the protein there has been damaged so this is the same thing so this is one of the example that what we received that there is some ash deposits uh, basically ash is containing sulfur and you see you know, uh, we have done one thing we have take the cross sectional view and we have give the sulfur print and sulfur is looking like that brown is deposits so this sulfur print you see that there is a sulfur in the outside surface okay sulfur in the outside surface sulfur print has been done so these are under the uh, then selection preservation and cleaning of fracture surface sometimes uh, for carefully preserved with oil and grease whatever i have told the fracture surface is separated carefully by abrasive cutter with the application of suitable cooling to avoid in avoiding heating cut because sometimes uh, in huge samples it is difficult to draw it into the laboratory so we just uh, so that this portion will be required so you have to cut the sample but any sample whenever cut don't cut by uh, that uh, without using coolant because in case of uh, cutting there is a chances of overheating so proper coolant is to be adopted so proper coolant to avoid any overheating during cutting the selection of the fracture surface is very important the selection should be such that the fracture surface reveals the characteristics features of the fracture i have shown that the what will be the fracture crack initiation point that you won't uh, able to predict but our people they will say that this fracture uh, is important so then cleaning the selection of the fracture surface is very important that the sample should be properly cleaned before tachography test in scanning electron microscope basically we can clean like this first we clean with the that uh, loose rust or debris then we have to clean with ultrasonic any the any adherent deposits or something like that that we will clean the cleaning should be done by applying soft camel hair brush to remove loose scale and deposits however ultrasonic cleaning is done to remove adherent deposits rust etc the tachographic study is important in case of cutting failure in case of cutting failure the tachographic study is very important so you see that this is a failure zone failure zone uh, inside the boiler so we have to take the fracture surface you see this fracture surface is full of rust so that fracture marks are totally damaged it is not properly preserved so it has been totally damaged because if you can clean this it has been already the fracture surface has been damaged it is very difficult to predict the fracture uh, pattern and also the fracture uh, crack or uh, initiation region very difficult here also uh, the fracture surface there is some consolidating mark still there is some brownish deposits due to rust so dimensional measurement is sometimes important for that the bulging so in that we have to take dimensional measurement so this uh, what will be that 230 here 230 uh, mm whether uh, the other portion down portion is different so percentage of bul bulging can be calculated and the thickness is also done like this chemical analysis chemical analysis is done to confirm the accurate material specification this analysis is important because improper material may not withstand long term service it will further lead to premature failure whatever in case of plain carbon steel uh, in case of boiler quality grade so whatever we we, we generally uh, analyze carbon silicon manganese sulfur and phosphorus uh, are mainly detected whether carbon silicon manganese are mostly important and in case of alloy steel in addition to this element chrome and moly is to be detected sometimes in chrome moly a percentage is not proper uh, so there is a other uh, uh, you can check up that whether it is a mix up of material or not so this is one of the non destructive testing you see in case of uh, visual inspection this uh, there is a manufacturing defect already exists in the uh, tube 
whether uh, one manufacturing steel manufacturing uh, uh, company has been provided, but you can't predict uh, visually. So we had done that uh, magnetic particle inspection. So there is a long cracks are there. So these cracks has been uh, 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 widened up during service and at premature stage. So manufacturing defect, uh, initial manufacturing defect uh, is also important that can be assessed by uh, different object safety testing. So these are die penetrated testing. You see that die penetrated, you know that uh, details that there is an indication uh, in case of die penetrated. The details in the next course, uh, in the details in case of non we will be discussing. So there is a defect in the oil joint. They have made one oil joint, but this is a defect. So this is uh, sometimes radiographic testing. Uh, there is a failure in economizer zone near oil. So what happens that oil has been done, so there is a poor quality of oil. There is a uh, that uh, blow hole or porosity in this region. Uh, and it has been done by macroscopic analysis. And you see there is a indications in the radiographic uh, plate. So this is the most important that microstructure analysis in the sample. You see that there is a failure of the boiler tube and we have taken the sample from this portion. You see that the, you can see in the, uh, that in scanning it the microscope there is a typical micro crack, severe cliff damage. You see that this is, uh, it is in 5000 x magnification. You see how the micro cracks looks like. So there is a drain boundary cracking. So basically in cliff damage, there is what happens, there is a, a, a link up of cliff voids in the drain boundary and it will form cracks in the drain boundary. So intergranular cracking will be happening. So this intergranular cracking in higher magnification, you see this cracking and finally you do the failure. So when you have taken the sample from the failure tree, so it will give the characteristic microstructure of the clip. And even from uh, from uh, away zone, in service exposed tube, uh, you see that the, the damage is much less. So there is a clip cavity, but this is not linked up. So there is some uh, cavity, uh, isolated cavities at the drain boundaries. So these are the cavities. You see that in case of uh, uh, that um, scanning electron microscope, so this is this is the cavities. And this is the carbides. So sometimes it is very difficult to predict in optical microscope. But in case of scanning electron microscope, you can see. So these are the carbides, drain boundary carbides, damaged drain boundary carbides, and these are the cavities and formation. These deep cavities are linked up and they form the micro cat like this. So this uh, microstructure is very important. So microstructure analysis can see, uh, say that what will be the uh, severity of the cliff damage and what is the severity of the failure. This is one of the failure due to gravitation. In case of uh, that carbon, this can happen in carbon and carbon half molecule. So you see that in case of uh, you taking the microstructure from this region, you see in the unage portion, there is a nodular chain of nodular graphite in a particular direction. This will join and form the cracks. So, in case of, uh, if you can take in the age uh, condition, so you see that the graphitization will form because uh, the cementite has uh, formed to iron, uh, plain carbon and iron graphite. And this graphite, uh, when this the graphic, graphite will form, it will be severely that uh, uh, affect the strength of the material. So, it has affected the uh, ductility as well as strength, everything. So, there is a failure. Sir, so, the graphic uh, formation of graphite radiation, is it is original or it's happened due to continuous pressure and temperature or it is only for high? No, actually, actually, this is, first thing, this has happened only that carbon steel and carbon half molly steel, SA209 D1 and 10 carbon steel. It has happened due to the overheating, prolonged overheating, not for that uh, original. Originally, microstructure will be keraite and perlite. So that perlite consists of that keraite and cementite. This cementite will break down because cementite is FEC3. FEC3 will break down to free graphite that is carbon plus iron. This free graphite, you see that in case of as per surface tension rule, that it will form that 
spherical set and this big graphite is spherical, nodular graphite which is around the grain boundary. What is happened? This that paper, uh, that uh, ductility and strength is poorly affected and it will cause failure. So if you can take that there is a uh, uh, mechanical property, load bearing property will be very poor. Asha, this is due to that uh, your uh, high temperature corrosion. High temperature corrosion, this is outside, you see there is a deposit, outside deposit. And beneath, beneath this outside deposit, there is a cracking. You see there is a cracking. There is a cracking. There is a cracking due to the formation of sulphide. Sulphide in the brain boundary, just there, just uh, beneath the deposits of this. So this is very deep. And what happens in power plant, uh, what, why it has <coughs> Sometimes that ass uh, is uh, stick to the tubes, whether the ass tubes and temperature is high. And properly, I, I just recommend that proper food growing practices to be done, so that the ass, uh, sticky ass will be uh, detached from the tube, so that uh, there is no more uh, the tube corrosion, high temperature corrosion. So even in high temperature, this is coupled with is corrosion is coupled with pit. If you can see the microstructure, again there is a thick cavities. So original microstructure will be like uh, damage will be that. <coughs> there is a spherodization. You see that there is a uh, carbide and all that carbide will be the great boundary. So it is not much damage structure, but this is a very damaged structure. And this case is for the pore that uh, ash is depositing on the tube and it will affect the uh, temperature uh, and proper heat transfer will not be there and it will cause the thick damage uh, of the material. So this is the factographic analysis, fracture surface, middle fracture, this is river bed pattern, fracture surface, this is also middle fracture of a gravitized stem tubes. So middle fracture, that is embrittlement has been done by gravitation. So there is an increase of hardness and that will be poorly affected. So oh, these are also the factographic study. So these are also the brittle fracture. And this is a uh, mixed mode fracture. There is some ductility is there. That kind of hurt should be there. And here, uh, this uh, is that crack initiation zone. This is basically a river bit brittle fracture. This is a crack initiation zone. So outside corrosion, you see one of the caustic embrittlement, caustic gouging. He is also a gouging inside surface. You see that. Uh, mostly this is concentrated on the weld, around the weld. When there is a porous deposit will be affected. In case of weld, uh, if there is a upset of the NaOH concentration and all. And this is uh, outside corroded uh, tubes. Tensile test is down to evaluate the material strength in terms of ultimate tensile strength, yield strength by personal innovation. This evolution is important in terms of material property. Any material damage like thermal softening and heat and embrittlement due to hydrogen and what I have told may result in change in UPS, YS and no Hardness testing also the characteristic properties of the metal changes in hardness is due to occurrence of different types of the metal. What is the control of boiler tube failure? Just uh, take a 5 10 minutes. Uh, this is the uh, your for that uh, power plant purpose. So what you have to maintain to Minimize the tube failure. So that is uh, in design stage that adequate furnace sizes. This is not a design uh, practice. Addressing left right unbalance in gas temperature. This is important. Because you see that most of the time left hand side gas temperature is very high, right hand side. There is no uniformity in the gas temperature. So this will have a uh, non-uniform pattern of temperature and may rise to uh, that overity in a particular uh, region. Material selection is very important, whether proper material will be given so that even uh, in case of 500 megawatt we are using 9 to 1 more steel and also oxygen steel. So poor material selection, material upgradation is also